like and I like to make it better. And one of the flies that I just fell in love with when I first fished it because it kept catching fish is the Sawyer pheasant tail. But the, the old Frank Sawyer version, which is just tied with wire. And this is copper kind of a, you can get all kinds of coatings with copper wire. Okay, this is kind of a reddish brown. And uh, this, I think, would be my base color. It's six thousandths of an inch or less. I'm going to tie on a size 12. I like a standard length hook. This is a 3769 TMC, which would be the uh, 3906 equivalent of must add. We're going to start right in the center of the usable shank length, and I'm going to wind consecutive wraps going forward through the thorax area. And as far as I'm concerned, nymph, nymph proportions are kind of the way Mother Nature set them up. So we're going to have 50% for the abdomen, and 40% for the thorax, and 10% for the head. So these little nymphs, they don't run around just without a head. Now I'm going to get <laughs> back to basically where I started the wire. I'm going to pull that rear wire. That opens those winds up, and I'm going to take the wire and go through those winds, making little diamond shaped structures until I get back to my tail set position, which in this case is just in front of the bar. I'm going to take uh, six strands of pheasant tail, and I want to show you something important here. The pheasant tail that you want has this nice dark center. Now that center will come up over the top of the wing case. And you remember, as we talked about uh, nymphs maturing and so forth, that uh, the wing case enlarges and darkens. And when we get through with this, you're going to recognize that this is a pretty darn good pale morning done nymph imitation. So we'll just take six fibers, and they're relatively easy to count down at the bottom. You see that? You start counting the top, you'll be blind in no time. So we just take those. We haven't talked about how to take barbs off a, off a stem, but the feather is stem, barb, and then the fuzz coming off the barb is the barbule. So if we grab this down at the base and pull the feather away, all the tips will stay even. You see that? If you try to pull the fibers away, you'll never keep you'll never keep them even. We want a fairly short tail here. Okay? About a gape and a half. At the very most. We take a soft loop of wire, and you gotta bear in mind you you're tying with wire, so you don't go back and forth, no false starts. Okay? Two wraps. One wrap in front, and if that doesn't stand up right there, it probably will come out. We'll bring our wire through the wraps in the rear, rather open, and then we're going to coat the thorax again with the wire. Instead of putting lead on this, we have a, an environmentally sound nymph here just with a copper wire. It's got plenty of, plenty of weight to sink rather rapidly. Okay? If you if you want to, you can put just a tiny bit of cement on at this point and just kind of touch it and blot it off. You don't want any of that coming through the materials. Now we've got a wire sticking out the rear, we've got a wire in front. Everything I've done is with the front wire so far. So we're going to take our pheasant tail and wind it like a ribbon. I want it flat. This wants to be a slim nymph, and if, if it doesn't want to wind as a ribbon, just wiggle it back and forth a little bit in, in the back here. As you come around, you just trap it with your index finger as you come forward. And when you get to this wrap, a real simple way to do it is just to catch it with the wire and draw it up on top. You can do that fast. It's hard to do slow. Oh, I'll do, because that's a neat maneuver. I want to be able to capture that in slow motion. Just, uh, we're, we're living in terror here. There. Okay? okay. Just catch the sparseness. And you notice.
notice that uh, most of the flies that we really like are quite sparse. It's a slim profile, gives great suggestion.